On the final night of August 1999, in the city known as the Paris of South America, Buenos Aires, a Boeing 737 carrying 100 passengers was preparing for takeoff, ready to embark on a journey to the beautiful land of Cordoba. But then, before the plane could even leave the ground, a horrifying situation unfolded. Like a moth drawn to a flame, the Boeing 737 spiraled out of control, crashing into the instrument landing system antenna and the airport's surrounding fence. What really happened in that fateful moment? Was it pilot error or was there a deeper flaw in the aviation safety systems? We'll uncover everything in today's story. Eight p.m. Aeroparque Jorge Newbery International Airport, Buenos Aires, Argentina. A Boeing 737-200 was being prepared to carry passengers for the upcoming flight. This was Lapa Flight 3142, a short domestic route covering approximately 400 miles west from Aeroparque Jorge Newbery International Airport in Buenos Aires to the city of Córdoba. The aircraft, registered in Argentina as LVWRZ, was equipped with two Pratt and Whitney JT-8D9A turbofan engines, part of the renowned JT-8D series. It first flew on April 14, 1970. During its 29 years of service, this Boeing 737 had accumulated 64,564 flight hours and completed 38,680 takeoff and landing cycles. For this flight, the aircraft was operated by a five-member crew. The captain, Gustavo R. Weigel, 45 years old, had 6,500 flight hours, including 1,700 hours on the Boeing 737. The first officer, Luis Echeverry, 31 years old, had logged 600 hours on the 737 out of a total of 4,000 flight hours. In addition to the two pilots, there were three flight attendants responsible for cabin operations and 95 passengers on board. Before we begin today's story, there is a critical detail to note. Both pilots had demonstrated poor attitudes and exhibited negative behavior during previous flight training and simulations. However, for some reason, the airline allowed both pilots to continue flying. At 8.20 p.m., the first officer and the flight attendants were the first to board the Boeing 737-200. First Officer Luis Echeverry informed one of the mechanics that the required fuel load was 18,739.3 pounds, and all of it needed to be stored in the wing tanks. The mechanic noticed that some fuel remained in the center tank and began transferring it to the wing tanks, following the technical documentation. At that moment, the captain entered the aircraft. Without glancing at the documents, he angrily threw the flight manual onto the floor, expressing his frustration. He went further by interrupting the ongoing fuel transfer, a procedure that the mechanic was carefully performing according to protocol. During the first four minutes on board, the captain, first officer, and flight attendants engaged in lively conversations about their personal lives. The atmosphere was friendly, suggesting they were more than just colleagues. They seemed to be longtime friends. However, the mood shifted quickly when the captain began discussing family troubles. I'm going through a tough time, he sighed. The first officer sympathized, adding, I'm having a terrible day too. They then proceeded to perform the pre-flight checklist, but instead of focusing on their tasks, they remained distracted by personal matters. This affected their concentration, leading to mistakes while reading the checklist. In fact, 
the pilots forgot to set the flaps to the correct takeoff position. This oversight occurred because they were distracted during the safety checks, and that distraction persisted through pushback, engine start, and taxiing on the runway. The lack of focus didn't end there. Even as the flight awaited clearance for takeoff amid heavy traffic and other aircraft queuing on the runway, the pilots continued chatting about unrelated topics. Their attention remained off-task, compromising safety procedures from the very start. At this point, a flight attendant was still in the cockpit of the Boeing 737. A passenger seated in the cabin happened to catch a glimpse of the three crew members chatting and laughing through the open cockpit door, just as the plane was about to take off. It felt more like a friendly gathering than a team performing critical tasks for an important flight. It wasn't until later that the captain finally instructed the flight attendant to leave the cockpit to ensure safety for takeoff. Shortly after, air traffic control reached out to Flight 3142 for an update. For context, Aeroparque Jorge Newbury International Airport has only one primary runway designated 13 and 31. And, at this moment, air traffic was dense, with multiple planes lined up for takeoff. Ahead of Flight 3142 was another aircraft, piloted by Captain Adrian, which was currently taking off. The unstable mood of Captain Weigel likely contributed to his growing impatience. 8.53 p.m. local time. Flight 3142 began its takeoff roll on runway 13. As the plane moved down the runway, the takeoff warning system immediately triggered a loud alarm in the cockpit. This system is designed to alert pilots of any configuration errors that could lead to a dangerous takeoff scenario, despite the clear warning that the aircraft was not properly configured for takeoff. The pilots chose to ignore the alarm and proceeded to accelerate down the runway. The pilots did not realize that the flaps were not set to the correct takeoff position. They were fully retracted instead. Extending the flaps increases the wing's curvature, enhancing the maximum lift coefficient, the upper limit of lift a wing can generate. This configuration allows the aircraft to generate the required lift at lower speeds, reducing the minimum speed needed for a safe takeoff. In recent months, LAPA pilots had been instructed to ignore all warnings during flights. As absurd as it sounds, this was the reality they faced. Why? Simply because the warnings were frequently inaccurate. These false alarms weren't caused by system malfunctions or random issues. Rather, they stemmed from the fact that LAPA's aircraft were not properly maintained. Critical failures, such as false fire alarms in the auxiliary power unit and repeated warnings about incorrect takeoff configurations, were common occurrences on LAPA's planes. This chaotic situation left pilots trained to always be alert, conditioned to disregard every warning, flashing lights or blaring alarms. None of it mattered. They were expected to carry on as if nothing was wrong. Worse, they were ordered not to report these false alarms to the airline or regulatory authorities. As the Boeing 737 began its takeoff roll, it quickly reached V1 speed. V1, rotate. The point at which aborting the takeoff becomes impossible. At this critical moment, the captain attempted to rotate the nose of the aircraft. However, with the flaps incorrectly configured, the plane was thrust into an extremely dangerous situation from the moment it left the ground. 
As soon as the landing gear lifted off, the plane stalled and the control yoke began to vibrate violently. This vibration system is designed to emit rapid, forceful shaking to warn pilots that aerodynamic lift is rapidly diminishing and that stall conditions may occur at any moment. Inevitably, the situation worsened. Unable to gain altitude, the Boeing 737 crashed into the ILS antenna and the airport fence like a moth drawn to a flame before veering off the runway. The aircraft then barreled across a busy roadway, hitting a car before ultimately colliding with construction equipment and a median barrier on the highway. Within moments, fuel spilling from ruptured tanks came into contact with the overheated engine and leaking gas from a nearby regulator station, igniting the entire plane in a fierce blaze. Before the flames engulfed the aircraft, one flight attendant attempted to use a fire extinguisher, but the extreme heat rendered it ineffective. She also tried to open the rear right door, but it was jammed due to structural deformation from the impact. However, in a critical moment, another flight attendant managed to open the rear left door, allowing some passengers to evacuate before the fire spread. Flames soared high as bright orange fire consumed the entire fuselage. The scene was filled with screams of terror from passengers and bystanders, creating a harrowing atmosphere of tragedy. Tragically, the entire crew, including both pilots, one flight attendant, and 63 passengers, perished in the disaster. The fire spread rapidly, consuming the aircraft and leaving behind nothing but charred wreckage and indescribable sorrow. The tragedy didn't end there. The plane also claimed the lives of two people in the car it crushed, raising the death toll to 68 victims. Investigation into the cause of the accident. Since the aircraft was manufactured in the United States, just three days after the crash, the National Transportation Safety Board dispatched a team to assist the Argentine Civil Aviation Authority with the investigation. The team consisted of a National Transportation Safety Board representative and technicians from Boeing, Pratt, and Whitney, and the Federal Aviation Administration. In Argentina, these investigators collaborated with Argentine Civil Aviation Authority personnel, forming teams based on their areas of expertise. Data from the flight data recorder and cockpit voice recorder were analyzed at the National Transportation Safety Board headquarters in Washington, D.C. Using this information, a computerized animation of the failed takeoff attempt was created. To conduct a detailed investigation, the Argentine Civil Aviation Authority technicians reassembled key components of the aircraft in a hangar at Aeroparque. They cleaned, identified, and analyzed circuit boards, actuators, electronics, and cockpit instruments recovered from the crash site. The technicians also disassembled the aircraft's engines to the extent possible, given the damage. Both the thrust reverser systems and braking systems were tested and found to be functioning normally. The investigative committee concluded that the immediate cause of the accident was the crew's failure to extend the flaps before initiating the takeoff roll. Examination of the wreckage confirmed that all flap actuator components were in the retracted position, matching the cockpit controls and indicating that the flaps were not deployed. FDR readings also confirmed that the flaps had remained retracted, with the indicator lights off, signaling that they were not engaged. Furthermore, investigators determined that the engines likely remained operational until the final impact. However, it was impossible to ascertain their exact performance at the critical moment from the black box data. It was observed that both engines were providing thrust during the takeoff attempt until power was reduced and the thrust reversers were deployed. For clarity, the thrust reversers, located behind the engines, redirect airflow forward to help the aircraft decelerate quickly after landing. In this crash, the left engine's thrust reverser had been activated, while the right engine remained in the forward thrust position, contributing to the loss of control. The pilots not only ignored the takeoff configuration alarm, but also failed to notice the improper flap setting which rendered the aircraft incapable of achieving sufficient lift during takeoff.
This was not just negligence. It was a consequence of a long-standing culture of poor discipline within the airline. After the crash, the criminal investigation was transferred to federal judge Gustavo Literas. In early March 2000, the judge summoned 540 witnesses, mostly pilots, first officers, and flight attendants from Lapa. By late August, nearly one year after the tragedy, the investigation had compiled 1,600 pages of findings across 80 volumes, heard testimonies from 1,500 witnesses, and produced 34 reports for further legal proceedings. The evidence indicated that, while human error was the direct cause of the crash, the captain's expired license and the failure of LAPA's senior management and Air Force officials also contributed significantly. On December 22, 2000, Judge Lateras issued a 1,200-page ruling charging four LAPA executives and three Air Force members with the crime of reckless endangerment resulting in death.